got this molt in here. Is this overkill? Maybe. Do I care? No. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a huge update on my tea stormy or Goliath bird eating tarantula named Zelda. If you don't know anything about tea stormy, let me tell you, their hairs are among some of the most irritating. You do not want these on you. She is an adult female and she just completed her first molt with me ever, which was definitely an experience. I feel like this is probably one of the most crazy molts that we've ever had around here. I also filmed my first molting time lapse. I have a lot to talk about, but before we do that, I actually had a couple other molts I wanted to just like show you guys first because I actually had a lot of tarantulas molt these past few weeks. I guess since it's like spring now and like they can sense like the changes in weather and the pressure changes and stuff like that. So yeah, let's just get into all of that. So the first one that I wanted to update you guys on molting is my L. striatopes confirmed female. I actually bought her as a confirmed female, so I'm not even really going to bother checking the molt, which she has placed right here. I actually managed to catch her like right after she molted, like before she even flipped back over. I managed to take a couple pictures of her with her really fresh white fangs. If you didn't know, their fangs are white right after they molt because they are super soft. They have to be really soft to come out of the oil old exoskeleton, but they darken to like a red and then they go to like a black color and that means that they're ready to eat for the first time. Because if they try to eat beforehand, their fangs are going to be a little too soft. They're not going to be able to penetrate their food. So yeah, I think she's hungry. Look at her and her big steps. <laughs> I don't want to like scare her. She's very flighty. So we're going to be like... Oh, there she goes. So yeah, I don't know for sure if she's ready to eat yet, but I think she is. It's been, I think, a little over a week now. Ah, oh, awesome. So that is gonna be her first meal since she molted. And as you see, she had no problems taking down that worm. And that's awesome. I'll probably actually feed her again in another day. Maybe even I'll offer another worm tonight. Usually after they molt, I just wanna give them like a bigger meal because they lose a lot of hydration throughout that process. It's really hard on them. So it's, you know, good to plump them back up and feed them a little extra for maybe the first week or two. But yeah, the molt went really well. You do wanna be careful because these do have urticating hairs still attached to them. Check out the fangs. Really cool. There's her carapace. It all pretty much came off in one piece. And yeah, I'll actually probably hang on to this. My husband, for some reason, has been wanting these lately, so I think he wants like the fangs. But yeah, pretty cool. And moving on to our next. So of course this one has decided to hide. It was out earlier. I think we can get it to come out with some food, but this is my T apophysis. So this is the same genus as my T stermy. This is the pink footed Goliath bird eating tarantula. This one actually molted, I think the very next day after Zelda. And this one is definitely gonna be ready for food because she is much smaller. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, I am possibly extremely sensitive to Zelda's hairs, so I'm gonna be really careful around this one as well, just because it's the same genus, and I'm not gonna pull the molt out right now, but there is the molt. I think she actually molted in her water dish, which is kind of funny, um, but yeah, there is the rest of her molt mat. They make a molt mat to kind of protect themselves as they molt. So I am gonna try to get this little feisty one out. I think some food will be enough to do that, but I don't know, we'll see, where are you? Okay, I can see some little toes, so. Oh no, we can't see it. <laughs> I believe it got it. Okay, you can see, see, she's got the worm. She's being really shy right now because I think it's like the sunlight. Usually she's out pretty much all the time. Like every time I walk by her enclosure, she is usually out. So yeah, I think that's why she's being shy, but she is eating and that is her first meal since her molt. And that is a big first meal for her because she's still a pretty small juvenile. But I don't know, like if you guys remember when I unboxed her, she was much smaller than this. So this entire genus grows like really big, really fast. <laughs> Now I guess let's go ahead and get to Zelda. So what I need to do is I need to pull out that old molt and I also wanna try feeding her for the first time. Now I actually gave her a little bit extra time than I normally do because the larger they are, the longer it takes them to harden. It's definitely been over a week since she molted. I think it's been about like 10 days. Sometimes they can take up to like two, three weeks after molting I've heard. I've never personally had one go that long without eating after a molt, but I do believe it's like 
totally possible sometimes they just do that kind of stuff. So let me just kind of talk about what happened. I look at her like pretty much every day. So the morning before she molted, I noticed that she was kind of covered in something and it was just like a quick glance and I was like, what is she covered in? I, I was doing like 20 things at once. And then so later came and I was like, oh yeah, like let's see what she's doing. It was bedtime and I look in her enclosure and I see that she has made a molt mat of doom. So this is something that I did not know about this genus, but T. Sturmy and the entire like Theraphosa genus, they tend to really kick a lot of hair into their molt mat. I think most new world terrestrials, they, they tend to kick some hair into their molting mats. It's not like unheard of. I've seen other spiders do it before, but I have never in my life seen anything like this. I was shocked. I was insanely surprised to see just how much hair that she kicked into her molt mat. The, it was like a carpet. It was a carpet of urticating hair. And the thing about T. Sturmy hair is that it is actually one of the most irritating urticating hairs like that exist. There's actually like different grades of urticating hairs. So yeah, theirs is one of the most severe that I know of if not the most severe. I'm sure somebody in the comments can let me know if there's something worse, but to my knowledge, theirs is the worst. And so immediately when I saw her molt mat covered in that hair, I was not looking forward to how this is gonna go. She's never actually kicked hair at me, so I've never had contact with it, but I just knew like that it's bad and to be careful around it, okay? so. Yeah. Anyway, so I did manage to get some really awesome time-lapse footage of her molting, which I'm going to insert here. So that time lapse took place between about 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. And then, you know, I let her rest for a while. I didn't want to disturb her. They're really sensitive. They are very like gooey. Yeah, you don't want to mess with them. But I knew that she needed water. I was just incredibly careful. I very slowly slid the lid off of her enclosure. I took my spray bottle and I misted it down just to kind of keep any hairs in there down on the ground. And then I reached in and I put this water dish in, a full water dish, because her other one, she's, you know, covered in hair and dirt and leaves so, and moss. Slowly shut it, okay? And then later that night, I noticed that I had like maybe some bug bites on the back of my leg and I didn't really think too much of it. I just thought like I got bit by a bug or something. And then by the end of the night, I had those bug bites bites like all over my legs, both my legs. Uh, immediately I kind of figured it was some kind of allergic reaction. It was super duper itchy. I didn't think that I had any contact on my legs, but I mean, I'm sure it's possible that it got somewhere or it could have been like a systemic reaction. I don't really know, but I coincidentally already had like a doctor's appointment. So when I saw him, he told me that it's definitely hives and you know, I'm definitely allergic to something. We can't really say for sure what what I'm allergic to. So I don't wanna say for sure it was a reaction to her because honestly, it could have been a reaction to anything. It's just like a huge coincidence that it was like that same day that happened to me. I don't want to like perpetuate misinformation and anything like that. I don't really know. I don't know. I, I don't know <laughs> what I will say. What I do know is that I am going to be extremely careful messing with her from now on because whatever that reaction was from sucked. Okay, it sucked. I was so itchy. I have not opened her enclosure since and, and it's time. I need to feed her. I need to get this old molt out, which is still covered in urticating hairs. And I want to mist her enclosure really good because I've only been poking the nozzle through these little holes to give her water and I really just need to give her like a good big misting. So what we are going to do... <laughs> like I feel I'm kind of feeling it like I'm not even kidding like this is kind of like if these were black I need to hit the button. 
This is what I'm gonna put her molt in because I wanna show her molt off, but I don't ever wanna come into contact with the hairs. This is airtight. I actually bought it to be an enclosure, but you know what? I found another purpose for it instead. I can display her molt without getting her hairs everywhere. Very carefully, we are going to put this put this molt in here. Is this overkill? Maybe. Do I care? No, I literally don't care. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so there's her molt mat of doom still intact. She ripped up part of it though, like see. Let's see, I guess. There she goes, yay, she ate. I would say that is a completed successful molt. Now that she ate, we're gonna do her another cause she is a big girl. She needs to get it herself because I cannot touch anything in here. There she goes. Nice, let's keep going man. Let's keep giving her worms. <laughs> Honestly, she could probably eat like five of these. There goes another. But yeah, there is her enclosure. But yeah, there she is. And I'm gonna carefully, I'm just carefully putting this lid back on. I'm not filming down here right now, but that's all, that's all you're missing. This is like a really big molt. It's kind of hard to tell because it's still like uh, crumbled up and everything. I really wish I could pin it and straighten it out. But again, I really just can't mess with it. Before we end this video, I did just want to let you guys know that I did not have a reaction to Zelda's hairs. So I think that the measures I took worked. And I also wanted to show you guys this really awesome bin that I put together. I ended up adding other molts that I had on some shelves and stuff all into it and called it the skin bin. Full disclosure, I didn't come up with that name. I've just seen other people use it too. So yeah, anyway, that's all I wanted to add. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget I have an Instagram that I use probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. And I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet picks.